in this first scenario we're going to start simply by adding a new user to the HR application and this is the front end to our uh, simulated HR application that is nothing more than a database front ended with this uh, uh, applet and we set IT team in a way to say well when anything changes on this database send me that change so the workflow is going to kick in this can be your PeopleSoft, uh, S, uh, SAP, HR, whatever HR system you, you may have. So let's start by creating a new user. His name is Johan. His name is Santana. And uh, the information that's going to be passed on to ITIM is his manager. So ITIM will uh, put that into uh, one of his uh, attributes. Uh, to wh who his manager is and the initial title will determine that he's going to get the basic two accounts one for ITIM for him to use and another one for the LDAP so when we do that we the the uh, the whole process is going to start up and we will see that the process finishes when it sends the emails notification uh, to Johan to indicate and we, s we just saw that that happened uh, that indicate that he got his new account. So we go into this uh, Thunderbird email system that uh, we put here. It's an open one, and uh, but we work uh, as we said before with uh, notes, exchange, uh, and, and other uh, email system. And in here we should have a J Santana. Here it is, and he should have gotten two emails for the two accounts that were created to him. And here they are. And so this is you know his. Uh, ID and he's telling well your your ID is J Santana and your email is Smartway and to go to iTeam and start doing things just click on the link so he clicks on the link and this is the desktop this is the nice looking minimalistic easy to use interface for Mr. Santana so all he needs to do is here log in as a J Santana and put his password which was Smartway and he needs to uh, the the system the interface is uh, very minimalistic again to make it easier for everybody to use the the section here on the top is when a manager or anybody has an action that the IT system is expecting them to to comply in this particular case is you need to put your password your forgotten password information this is a challenge respond question and let's go on and, and, and deal with that and IT team has basically two ways of dealing with this again out of the box one of them is a user define his own challenge response question which I don't particularly like because uh, people don't put the right challenge response question or if, even if the ones that put them that are really good that sometimes they are so good that they forget about them when they need to use them uh, and there's another mode which is the company defines a set of questions based on the relationship they have with the with the company and they they should answer those questions in any case you shouldn't expose this to the internet and if you do or even when you don't you should have your SIM system monitor uh, password changes uh, let's say if you have two or more in a week you should investigate that because that might be a hacker attacking that honeypot so we're going to go ahead and put the first question uh, let's say that uh, it's going to be first mother-in-law and let's say that my answer will be I do not want to remember the second question is going to be first pet and let's say that that is uh, bluefish and last question is going to be uh, favorite author and it's going to be Conan Doyle Once I've done that, the system says, well, these are your challenge response questions. That's fine. I go back to my home pages and there's nothing pending for me to use. At the top, I can change my password. I can change the, the, the information I just put in there. And the important things, uh, the net of the things that most users are going to be doing is requesting accounts because even though we want them to think in terms of accesses, like you know, access to this blue folder, this application, still many things are going to be uh, related uh, still to accounts. You can actually see what accounts you have, and if we click in here, we see that he only has those two basic accounts, the ITIM service and an LDAP. 
and uh, he doesn't have any access because he hasn't started requesting any and um, he can delete access actually not too many people use these things it's very rare that people call and say please uh, i no longer need access to this can you take me out but you can put this option all these things can be easily configured we will show this in another video by just doing clicking on the console again no coding to to, to customize to, to configure sorry <laughs> the screens uh, that you want people to see. This is pro for looking at uh, the profile information, uh, like if you want people to keep uh, track of their own cell phone number and all that information. Request they make to the system, and I put in all you know, the options. You probably will not like to put so very many options in the self-help you uh, GUI because here less is more. And um, uh, an important one is here, they approve uh, the delegate activity in which the user, when he's going on vacation, he can actually delegate uh, where the requests uh, from ITM are going to actually go. What we're going to do is we're going to show why this information is good for and we're going to do that by showing what happened, how you can use your challenge response question. And what we are doing now is we are going to log off from the system and we are going to uh, pretend that we came back from my vacation. It's such a great vacation. I do not remember my password. Hmm. So what do I do about it? Well, you have this button that is customizable here. You, you, you will put the logo of your company and you click reset password and you put your user ID, which is Jay Santana. And you click next. And this is a secure communication between uh, iTeam uh, and, and this uh, client. And say first pet that was, uh, we said Bluefish. That's the first question. And the second question, we set the system to, you need to answer three correctly out of, uh, uh, two out of three. You can set it in whatever way you want. And this one was, I do not want to remember. And if I type all that right, and I did, I can ch change my new password. And notice that I can also unlock you my password in case that I tried many, many times and I got uh, locked myself out of, uh, out of item. So we're not going to uh, actually uh, change that. We're going to go back to the to the console. I just wanted to show that uh, feature is called the DPRA function. And what we're going to do is that we're going to start creating uh, our first role and our first uh, 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 provisioning policy. So let's go into the cockpit. This is the interface for the administrator of, of item. So IT manager put my password and I get in and notice all the options that I have in here manage policies you know design workflows no coding uh, you know a bunch of things that I can do so you need to know where to click in here but we'll see that it's actually not that that hard to use so we start by creating a role we're gonna create a role and uh, we click here create and the questions are, one is a static role, and we're going to start with a static role. We, we'll use a case where we uh, use the dynamic roles as well. And the role name is going to be access to active directory. And you can put a description here that's going to be shown. You can put a role classification, and this has to do with the type of workflows that you can actually tie this up. We're not going to uh, put any. You can put an owner of a role, and that also has to do with the workflows for approval. Notice that a, 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 a another role can be the owner of the role. We are not going to deal with that in this uh, particular uh, case. You enable access for this role because you want people, when they people get this role, they get some access. And that's all we need to do. We have just created our first role. Now we need to create a provisioning policy. Well, let's go here, manage policy. There is a section for manage provisioning policies. And we do the same. We create one. And we're going to call it access to AD. And we're starting simple here. And uh, again, a caption, a description, the policies enabled, the priority. We are not going to deal with that right now. In another video, we will. And the business unit allows you to do classification between different companies, different sections of the company. Again, we're not going to uh, deal with that right now. The next uh, section is the members. Who is going to be a member of uh, that this uh, provisioning policy applies? Everybody? No. Role specified below is the option we want. And what role that is, is the one we just created. So we click here, search, and it was this, access to Active Directory. That's the one we want to tie this up to. 
entitlement. Okay, when I get this, what is it that I get? Well, what I want is to get automatically, manual means you are pre-approved, so the minute that you ask for it, you actually get it, but automatically means you, you, you get it immediately. All services? No, we want a specific server service, which is actually the service that is the abstraction for Active Directory. So we click in here and look for OFN Active Directory or this uh, BOAD service. Let's say that we're going to pick up on the BOAD service. The workflow, we are not selecting anyone in particular, so it's going to take the default workflows, and we're going to do plenty with workflows uh, later. Actually, actually, I could, and we will expand this uh, further, we actually, I can look deep into the guts of AD, you know, by clicking in here, and I'm going into, you know, all the attributes from, from, from AD, I could even go into the group information, you know, and, and click in here, you know, all, all and, and again, we're going to deal with that uh, later. So we're not going to specify anything but just uh, an, an, an AD account. So we click continue. We submit this. When do you want this immediately? If, you know, at a particular time and date? No, we want it right now. So that I that it's it. We have create created our first provisioning policy. So let's uh, minimize this and let's go to Active Directory to see that there's no Johan Santana in there in that system. And we see this, uh, this only these two users. And uh, what we do now is that we go as a user and log in as Jay Santana, as we did before. And we're going to put our password. And we can start requesting accesses. We, we do here a search. And we want access to AD, so I can put in here something like access ACC and see, you know, what it finds for me. Oh, here, here is the one. Access to Active Directory is a role, and that's what I. If I get that role by virtue of the provisioning policy, I'm gonna get provision to AD. It's in process. If we refresh the screen, we're gonna see that it's successful. It just did it. I can actually go into AD and we see that Johan Santana is actually provisioned. So that's the first case of we creating a role and a provisioning policy. We're going to be expanding on the things that we're going to be doing with the common thing of no coding uh, to do sophisticated provisioning actions with uh, item.